So yesterday's video was pretty intense, pretty uh, unusual, and it will take me a few videos to answer the questions and really uh, unpack uh, a pretty radical statement that turns around our basic ideas about reality and consciousness. Actually, this video, I probably should have did it first. Uh, you'll see it's related because in this video, I'm going to not just discuss the relationship between consciousness and light, but suggest that they are actually the same thing. Okay, and I'm going to do this using a very traditional, most of the stuff I'm going to say you could pick out of any uh, psychophysics, physics, or uh, sensory and perception textbook. And so, what do we know about light? Well, we know things like stars emit light. And we say, well, what does that mean? Well, it means that they are emitting, radiating photons. Photons are little energy packets that we call light. And they're actually at this quantum level, which means that you can't divide them. They're, they're at that kind of um, indivisible level. And uh, they do all sorts of strange things because they're at the quantum level. And of course, they leave the sun and they go the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. And uh, I think it takes eight minutes for one of these particles to fly through space and finally get to Earth. And so what happens then? Well, the, you know, the sun uh, bombards the Earth with all these photons, and that's we call it day. And we say, well, it's day out. But uh, if we get to the visual part of this, of course, the photons are actually uh, making contact with the eye and they have to go through all these different various parts of the eye. Most of it gets lost. But some of these photons reach the back of the eye, the retina, and that's where this process of transduction takes place. And transduction is really a mystical thing. I mean, I remember teaching it in sensation and perception, it, like we kind of know what it's about, but the process takes energy from the outside world and transforms it into neural language, something the brain can understand. And so these photons make contact with the retina, this transduction takes place, and then suddenly we're not dealing with photons anymore, we're dealing with neurological language. And then those neurons through synapses communicate all the way back to the visual cortex, the back of the brain, and that somehow these result in what we call vision, an illuminated world of light. Here's the problem. Where is the light? It says it's not in the photon because, as I described, some, if you look at the sun, the sun is light. And so light is anything that emits photons. But then if we take a photon, it itself does not emit photons. So these little photons themselves can't be light. And that doesn't even matter, though, because once they get transformed into neurological language, there's definitely no light present. I mean, there's no light going. It's just, talk about one of the darkest caves, of, I'm sure, inside your skull. It's absolutely uh, zero light. And so there's no light out there, and there's no light inside. So where is the light? And here's where consciousness plays a role. Consciousness is what is illuminating the universe. It's not light because it's not out there. The only thing that illuminates and what we call vision. So, uh, you know, see the light. Can you, you know, we, we always talk about that as being so connected to uh, let there be light. You know, it's so connected to what we would call conscious experience. And that's for one reason, because what we call light is consciousness.